Watchers, welcome back to Perth Watch, your horology channel, broadcasting from right here in Perth, Western Australia. Today I have another piece from Pagani Design. I haven't reviewed a Pagani for some time. Perhaps they should be called Pagani No Design, as you will see. So a typical black box. This one actually has a little bit of bit of friction here. So that's probably only a two and a half on the spin here, not as smooth as some of the other designs. Let's get on with the internals here. So, you know, I've got uh, the links at the bottom there and then, you know, you got a user manual, which is multi-caliber. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna go into this, but I will show you uh, the warranty card, which uh, they usually leave blank uh, and you can fill it in yourself. Pretend that it comes from a local dealer and uh, near you, and then maybe you can try taking it back there because I'm pretty sure uh, the international warranty is pretty much non existent. So, showing you guys the watch in a little bit more detail here. So, uh, what we have here is the Pagani Design PD1716, otherwise known as the Black Bay 36 homage. Um, I will put a shot of the Tudor. Uh, watch on the side here if you have any doubt as to where the design actually comes from. I have absolutely no doubt. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, so this is $110 or thereabouts uh, available on various retailers. I will put links down the bottom uh, to sources I can find. Uh, so check them out if you, you know, want to consider purchasing this. First up, uh, let's, uh, as I usually do, talk about the movement in here. So what we have here uh, is, as you expect, a Seiko NH35A. Not going to read it out, uh, you know, the specs on the side there, but I will say this is running rather fast. It is running about plus 20 seconds per day in the five days I've had this running. The quick set date in this case is featured at the usual three o'clock position, black writing on white disc, so they haven't actually swapped it out for anything more special. Uh, I guess that's okay because it counterbalances the nine o'clock marker on the opposite side of the face. Okay, moving on to case then. So the case here is a 36.8 millimeter. Now I know it's a Black Bay 36 homage. I don't know what the actual Tudor watch uh, measures, but by calipers measuring as accurately as I can, the diameter of this case or the width of this case, I should say, is 36.8 millimeters. The bezel itself alone is 35.5. You can see hopefully that the bezel is actually slightly narrower than the widest point of the case or the, the, the width of the case, I should say. Thickness is pretty good, right? They've, they've actually achieved 11.8 millimeters, so under 12 millimeters. I've always appreciate that they can keep it thin. 20 millimeter lug width, which I think might be actually the same as the real thing. Uh, it does make it slightly disproportional, you know, in a 36 millimeter case or thereabouts, but it is what it is, 20 millimeter lugs. And a lug to lug distance on this small case, which is very manageable at only 44.5 between my thumbs there, 44 and a half millimeters. Finishing wise, um, you can see already, right? You're getting a polish on the bezel. Uh, it is actually longitudinal brushing on the top surface of the lugs. Uh, transitions to a curve polished sides, circular polish on the bottom surface of the lugs there, and then a polish uh, case back, which is screw down. And then most of the case back, of course, is uh, that display window where you can see that cheapo, undecorated Ebosch Seiko movement. Uh, some people would rather prefer a nice engraving rather than a display back on the movement like this. And I probably do actually mostly prefer a nice engraving. Uh, with that screw uh, display back and screw Pagani sign crown. And one thing I gotta say is Pagani uh, logo probably is most suited to a March Tudor because that's probably the closest uh, to the real thing that they're going to get, you know, the kind of shield type of shape. So screw down crown, 100 meter water rating is what they rate this watch. Reasonable, you know, that's kind of like an Explorer watch type of rating, but uh, the real thing is rated at 150 meters if in case you're interested in, you know, what the real Tudor Black Bay, you know, 36 millimeters is kind of Tudor Explorer uh, is rated at. Okay, moving on to the dial quickly now. So this is a satin black dial. It's got printed details, 
and chapter ring around the periphery here. It's got polished applied indices, right? So 11 indices apart from the three o'clock position uh, where the date is sitting. The hands are polished snowflake style. Now, not just the hour hand being the snowflake, the seconds hand also features the, the diamond configuration, which is the snowflake uh, look here from Tudor. It's got loom in the 11 index positions and the three hands. I don't know if you can appreciate it on this macro shots that I'll show, but it is slightly different color on the hands. You know, it's almost a bit thinly applied here, which is really a big negative for me, you know, being able to see that the loom on the hands are a different color. Uh, loom shot right here for you guys to see how it glows in the dark. It's not the best glowing loom by any means. It doesn't quite last through the night or very, very dim after about say five or six hours in the dark, I would say. Okay, on top of the dial uh, is a flat sapphire crystal. Uh, nothing more special than that. It doesn't have a cyclops. I don't mind that it doesn't have a cyclops. I really tend not to like it. I can read the date fine uh, as it is. Uh, and you know, that's really how the real thing is in terms of being a flat sapphire rather than any uh, doming as far as I'm aware. Moving on to the bracelet then, this is a three piece per link oyster style, dare I say it, oyster style bracelet. It's got polished sides, polished side surface and a uh, longitudinal brush on the center pieces. Solid end links of course, very few you know micros are doing anything other than solid end links these days. It does have screw adjustment, so hopefully you can see it there, they've actually managed to to do pretty nice screw links for the adjustment. Uh, the bracelet does taper to 18 millimeters and this class is 20 millimeters wide. Unfortunately, it does look like pressed metal uh, rather than uh, you know anything more than that. It's not machined. It is a push button release, which is, you know, I, I think the, the tolerance here is fairly good, uh, but I'll show you the dive extension. So-called dive extension is cheapo pressed metal, nothing more than that. It does have three point micro adjust that you can see there. So, you know, appreciate that they've fitted that in at least. Right guys, so that's the entire description of the watch. Just gonna snap it on the wrist for a wrist shot for you guys now. And there we have it guys, the Tudor Black Bay 36 homage by Pagani Design, the PD1716 on my 17 centimeter wrist and you know, I, I like I like the, the fact that they've gone for a small watch that fits any guy I know and you know, just about, I think any, any guy I know can carry this very easily and some women can, you know, very happily carry this quite easily as well. You know, 11.8 millimeter stick and remember only 44 and a half millimeter lug to lug width there. And that's how the class looks. Okay, now onto the meat of the comments here. What do I enjoy about this watch? What do I like about it? Well, look, it's a solid enough package, right? It's it's fair casework, not the most impressive, not the best that they've ever done, but it's fair. Uh, 100 meter water rating, which means that it can go everywhere that I'm likely to go, including beach and pool, you know, snorkeling, whatever. Sapphire crystal, that Seiko NH35 workhorse and solid links, right? The links are pretty good. Uh, it is a handsome, Overall, you know, now this is more subjective. It's it's a handsome vintage size Tudor homage, right? It's actually pretty good looking, but that's thanks to Tudor, not thanks to Bagani. So good on them, I, I reckon, for taking on the 36 millimeter. You know, we don't have enough small watches. They tend to upsize some of their watches. They, they've been notorious at doing 42 millimeter sub homages. So I like it that they've gone smaller for this one. Good on them for providing something different. You know, so if you want, uh, to try out how this might look, you know, this Tudor watch, this Explorer style watch, uh, and you have about $100 you want to spend, this might be a fair option. Uh, probably not too many others uh, that are much better than this at this price point. What are the weaknesses? You know, I've kind of alluded to this, the loom is crappy. They really need to make that loom better, you know, at, at least apply it better so that I can't see the different colors between the hands and the indices that just screams a bit of cheapness there and I think it's it's a rather poor effort. Hopefully they will lift their game up as they go along as they usually do. Pagani are usually quite good at improving on any criticisms that you know people bring out on their products here. What else I would say the other major problem is the class is subpar. You know press metal especially that dive extension that's just poor. They've done pretty good job on their Submariner homage class. 
I reckon they should be able to do better on this. So this is a little bit of a dropped ball here. They really, I think, should have done better on this. That's my opinion on this. So, you know, overall, it's okay, right? It's Pagani. They do lead the field at this price point, but this one is, they, they just mucked up a little bit here. So I don't think this is going to be anywhere near my favorite. I don't think it's their best. No doubt it still sells well, but it definitely has its weaknesses. So there you go, guys, my review on this PD1716. Let's flip it around now for the wrap up. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed that quick fire review. Let me know your thoughts and comments below. Always look forward to the discussion from my viewers. Guys, if you enjoy my videos, do consider subscribing. New content every week, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for sticking with me. And as always, I'll catch you guys again next time. Thank you.